Hello everybody. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to both diagnose and replace your windshield wiper stock. Some symptoms I personally have been experiencing is, particularly in cold weather, the colder it gets, the worse it gets, but when I first turn on the vehicle and it's still cold out, I try putting it into intermittent mode or full auto mode and it will do nothing for the first solid minute or two, which is extremely annoying. Or I'll just have to get in like the perfect position just to get it going. Um, and the third thing it'll do is if it's been working in full auto mode for a while and I want to go back to intermittent mode, it'll again just delay and take a solid minute or two for it to switch modes, which is very, very annoying. So it's definitely time to get it replaced. There are three possible things that you can check if you have an improper working windshield wiper stock. You could check the fuse, you could check the relays, or you should just replace the whole stock itself. So why don't we get started? So if the wiper switch doesn't work at all, first thing you might want to do is check the fuse. So we're going to pull this little driver side fuse cover off and we're going to look at the little chart here. You can see it says wiper washer, uh, fuse number 12, 30 amps. So we'll compare it to the side here. Fuse number 12, 30 amps. And we're going to pull out that fuse and make sure it's not blown. And if you pop open your hood, come around to the passenger side fuse box under here, pull off this cover, there's a little fuse puller right in here we can use. And we can take a little fuse puller, set it on there, and we can pull our fuse right on out. And you can see that little V shape in the center of the green. That's exactly what you want to see. If it were split or not attached, that would mean you have a blown fuse and you'd want to replace that. The next thing you can check are the wiper relays, which are located under the hood on the driver's side next to the brake fluid. So here's our little relay station. And we've got three relays located right here. We're just going to take these out and we're gonna check the electrical connectivity amongst all three of them. So to check the relays, we're just gonna need a couple things. We're gonna need a nine volt battery, some alligator clips certainly do help, and we're also gonna need a voltmeter. So first thing we're gonna do is just check that uh, the few, or the relays actually close, and we can do that by taking one alligator clip and putting the other on the other, and just checking to make sure that they're clicking. That's exactly what you want to hear on the four pronos like that. And then lastly, here's the five prong relay. Sometimes you might have to mess around with the polarity. There we go. And those are all working good like that. Another thing we can check is the ohm. So we'll set it to the ohm setting right there and it should read between 50 and 120. So got about 76-ish right in the middle. That's perfect. Test this one. Pretty similar reading, 76. And this one's a five prong. This one might be different. It's not the same as the others. But nonetheless, it should still be between 50 and 120 mark. It's on the high end, but it is within that range. Next, we're gonna use our voltmeter and check for what's called continuity. So we're gonna take it, put it to that setting right there. Push that little button so it makes a sound for when there's a proper circuit. We'll just make sure we get a click and we'll put the prongs or the alligator clips on the respective prongs. Say. Then we can take our voltmeter and we can put on the remaining prongs like that and we can hear that beep. That means we have good continuity and that it's creating a proper circuit. And we've got a reading of pretty much next to zero. That's also what you want to see. Bam. 
Let's try with the others. Perfect. Now, that's the four prong. That's a little easier. The five prong has two different circuits. There's one with the electrical connection open and one with it closed. So you might have to experiment a little bit. So the first one's with it open. Come on. There we go. There's our zero. That's perfect. So now we're going to put the electrical connection on. Let's make sure we got the correct polarity. There we go. We'll put our prawns back on real fast. Now we'll have to check for the other one. I think it's these two. Oh, come on. And there's zero. Bam. So uh, both of the different circuits are in perfect working order and we have determined that our relays are in perfect working condition so that only leaves one thing remaining the actual wiper assembly itself so now i'm just going to show you how to buy those parts quickly so we're going to come to accuratepartsforless.com we're going to select our vehicle we got a 2002 teal sedan type s we'll come on down to electrical and control unit engine room and here's our Wiper relay station. These two are the uh, four prawn relays, and this one is the five prawn relay. And we'll come back, back to electrical again, and combination switch. And then here is our wiper switch. Then, if you want to buy the actual fuses, you can always come to Amazon and buy a neat little kit like this. I want to mention that there are three different types of fuses. There are standard fuses, low-profile mini fuses, and mini blade fuses. And in my car specifically, uh, I have the mini blade fuses, so verify which type your car has. I'll also be posting links in the description for all these parts. So the first step in replacing the wiper switch is to take this handle here, bring it down, and then bring the whole steering wheel down can kind of lock it in place there then we need to remove this top cover here we can kind of just yank up on it pull it straight up and out next we need to remove the bottom half of that piece of trim by removing those three screws next we'll take the steering wheel and we'll kind of prop it up just lock it a little bit so it stays in place We'll come around on the other side and we gotta pull the piece of trim over the keyhole. And then we can kind of work it down and out. Next, we just need to turn the power to the car on. Then we'll take our steering wheel and we'll turn it right about 90 degrees. That way we can get access to these two screws here. And then we'll turn the power back off and remove those two screws. After removing those screws, we have to remove two electrical connectors, this big white one right here, and then there's a smaller one in the back that attaches to the wiper switch itself right there. After removing those couple switches, next we have to take the actual switch out itself. And right here in the center, there's a little tab. So what we have to do is we have to take a pick tool or something like this, or maybe a really small Phillips head screwdriver, push on that little tab there and then you can also use another finger to pull back on this piece of plastic here and the switch will come right out and out comes the switch and then to put the new one back in all you have to simply do is just click it in place and then from there on out it's a reverse order process you can reconnect your two electrical switches put those two screws back in Put your bottom panel back in and the three screws with that and then the top attachment piece there and you're all finished last but not least we can test our new wiper switch 
once everything's put back together. So we'll turn the power on. Let's check the washer fluid. Looks good. Intermediate. Perfect. Slow mode. Full auto. And last but not least, the single mode. There we go. Works great. So thanks for watching today's video. Feel free to leave a comment and ask a question. I'm pretty good at getting back to people. Also check the description. I'll be posting a little bit more information down there. So again, have a great day and take care.